All right, let's look at how you would go about determining whether a given chemical bond is polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, or ionic. First of all, in order to do that, let's look at an example. Suppose I say you have the molecule CH4. And I ask you, are the bonds in this molecule polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, or ionic? Well, you have to understand that this is a reference to a molecule containing four carbon hydrogen bonds. There's four carbon hydrogen bonds. This is four hydrogens all around the central carbon. One, two, three, four carbon hydrogen bonds. It's four of the same bond. So the real question here, if I'm asking about the bond, is is the carbon hydrogen bond polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, or ionic? In order to answer this question, you need to consult a periodic table with values for electronegativity. Because what this comes down to is, are we, are we, I'm asking you, if I ask you this, do these share electrons equally? Do they share them unequally? Or do they not even share at all and have electrons transferred from one atom to the other? We find that out through looking at the electronegativity values. This electronegativity is a reflection or a measurement of how strongly an atom attracts an electron. If it has a high electronegativity, such as fluorine, it very strongly attracts electrons, as opposed to francium with very low electronegativity has a very weak attraction for electrons. If you pair up a very strong and a very weakly negative atom, this one's going to steal the electrons away from this one, and it's going to be ionic. Whereas if they are similar values for electronegativity, such as these, or maybe even like uh, maybe you pair these two together, they're going to share electrons equally because they have roughly equal tendency to attract it to themselves. So looking at carb, here's how you actually do it. I look at the value for carbon. Let's see how strongly carbon attracts the electron. It is electronegativity value of 2.5. Hydrogen has an electronegativity value of, where is it? Here we go, 2.1. So what's the difference between their electronegativities? 2.5 minus 2.1 equals 0 0.4. Well, what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. If we see electronegativity differences, e electro, wow, okay, apparently I can't spell. Electronegativity differences, they can tell us what kind of bond is going to happen. If it's a difference of 0 to 0 0.3 ish, that's nonpolar covalent. 0 0.3 ish to 1.7 ish is polar covalent. This means they roughly attract the atom equally. A difference of this much means that one's attracting the atom or the electron more than the other. Sorry, I accidentally said atom when I meant electron. So these are attracting the electron roughly equally. Here, one is, atom is attracting the electron much more than the other. And if it's 1.7 plus, that's ionic bond. So if we see a difference of 0 0.4, we'd say that would be a polar covalent bond. So polar covalent bond. So we would say CH is polar covalent bond, therefore we would say the bonds in here are polar covalent, all four of them. No, you do not multiply it by four. Having four does not increase the strength, you just get four of the same one. Each one has, each one is a polar covalent bond, That's what we, so this is just saying it's four polar covalent bonds. Um, H2O, as another example, this is going to follow, oops, I can't talk and write at the same time, apparently. All right, so this is going to follow the same method. It's just two oxygen-hydrogen bonds, so it's just two of these oxygen-hydrogen bonds. What's the value for oxygen? 3.5. What's the value for hydrogen? 2.1. So you subtract the 2 and you get a difference of 1.4, which according to this is definitely a polar covalent bond, which means the molecule having two of the same sort of bond is a polar 
covalent molecule. Now, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. In class, you've been told that metal and a nonmetal makes a covalent bond, a non-ionic bond. This is telling you it's non-ionic. Let's look at sodium chloride. We know this is ionic. It's a metal and a nonmetal. Let's check to see how it comes out. Sodium has a value of 0 0.9. Chlorine, here, I'll even write it here, 0 0.9. Chlorine has a value of uh, 3.0. So let's take 3.0 minus 0 0.9 is a difference of 2.1. According to this chart, that means it's ionic. Ionic bond. All right, that works pretty well. Now, um, I would say to anybody using this, be careful. You will not necessarily always find that what you memorize, metal plus nonmetal, is ionic. Metal and nonmetal, or nonmetal and nonmetal makes covalent, may not necessarily always be true. That was a very general guideline. Let me try and find one that will give an exception to that. Uh, let's see. Aluminum is a metal. Phosphorus is a nonmetal. So aluminum phosphide. Let's see. Aluminum is plus three. Phosphide is a minus three, so three, three, that reduces to one of each, aluminum phosphide. Aluminum has a value of 1.5, phosphorus is 2.1. That's the electronegativity value, so 2.1 minus 1.5 is uh, 0 0.6. That difference of 0 0.6 is polar covalent. So you have a metal and a nonmetal, which you would expect to be ionic, but this is not an ionic compound. It is polar covalent. So when we told you ionic is metal plus nonmetal once upon a time, that was just simplifying the reality of what's out there. So just be prepared that if you do see a question like this on the test, just don't go straight to, oh, metal plus nonmetal is ionic. Test it out, find it out. You may find that it's not what you thought it was going to be. All right, now um, I think that should pretty much take care of most of it. Let's see, anything else I could probably mention? I suppose here, let's have you try some, and then uh, let's see if you come up with the same thing I come up with. We can do a compound of sulfur and chlorine, we can do a compound of potassium and chlorine also, and we can also finally do a compound of hydrogen and fluorine. Go and pause the video, give it a try, see what those come out as, and then let's see if we agree. Oh, and I thought of one more thing we can try also, but first let's have you practice with these. All right, so uh, having, if you took the time to pause and practice, let's see. In the meantime, uh, sulfur is 2.5, chlorine is 3.0, so 3.0 here also, potassium is 0 0.8, hydrogen is 2.1, fluorine is 4.0, so these have a difference of 0 0.5. This is covalent polar. These have a difference of 2.2. .2. This is a difference. That minus that is 2.2. .2. That's ionic. And this minus this, 4 minus 2.1. You have 4.0 minus, oops, 4.0 minus 2.1 is a difference of 1.9 that's ionic, weakly ionic, but ionic nonetheless, even though you have uh, two nonmetals. It's an ionic thing. Now, uh, last thing to mention, it just occurred to me, what if you have fluorine gas or oxygen gas? What kind of bond is that? Well, you don't even need to consult the chart, but I'll do it anyway just to kind of make the point. The value for fluorine, this means 
right here, fluorine bonded to fluorine. This means oxygen bonded to oxygen. The value of fluorine is 4.0. The value for oxygen, I forget what it is, it's uh, 3.5. But it's the same thing, right? So 4.0 minus 4.0 is a difference of zero. which means non-polar covalent for both this one and this one. These are both non-polar covalent. Whenever you have two of the same thing bonded together, it's non-polar covalent. And even beyond the simple case of two things, let's consider ozone, which is O3. And if you go through the whole process of figuring out the Lewis structure, it comes out to this. And there's resonance because ozone can also, it could have had the double bond there, but whatever. Um, is this, what kind of bond is this? I could ask, is this a polar molecule, non-polar molecule? Pol or I should say polar covalent, non-polar covalent, or is it ionic? Well, look, it's just oxygen. Who cares if it has a lone pair? Who cares about double bonds and single bonds actually don't make a difference. Non if I asked what is the difference in electronegativity here, it's just oxygen minus oxygen. It's just... 3.5, 3.5, 3.5. The difference between any two is just zero. So it's nonpolar covalent. And that's just pretty well going to hold up for anything. Actually, oxygen gas, if you do the Lewis structure, comes out to that nonpolar covalent. Nitrogen gas, if you do the Lewis structure, comes out to this. Two of the same element, nonpolar covalent, because it doesn't change the way you calculate it. It's just nitrogen is 3.0, 3.0 minus 3.0, oxygen is 3.5, 3.5 minus 3.5. And fluorine, which has a single bond, okay, let's be a little more correct. What kind of bond is this? Doesn't change the calculations. 4.0 minus 4.0, zero difference, nonpolar covalent. So that's the nice thing about whenever you see a molecule consisting of one or, or two or more of the same element bonded together, technically sulfur, by the way, exists as a ring of eight sulfur atoms. This is also nonpolar covalent. No calculation needed because it's all the same atom bounded to each other, thus meaning there's no difference in electronegativity from one atom to the next. They share electrons equally, nonpolar covalent. All right, so I think that should give a pretty good introduction to uh, determining the type of bonds using this table of electronegativity values. That should take care of it. Happy studies.